again and welcome to part 2 of Asteroids VR, which will cover player movement in the game. For this adaptation of Asteroids, the user's movement in the virtual world will be relative to the direction they are facing in real life. In other words, the camera will always move in the direction the player is looking. To get started, we'll need to create a player C-sharp script and attach it to GVR main to produce the camera's motion. But first, I'm going to create a scripts folder for organization's sake. Now that I have a scripts directory, I'll create player.cs inside of it. It will have to store and keep track of the head game objects transformed during gameplay. So I'm going to create a private transform variable fittingly named head transform inside of the player class for this use. Since player.cs will be attached to GBR main, we can utilize GBR main's transform to quickly find the head game object and start by calling find child on it. Head transform's forward vector will be used to calculate the player's movement direction each time the player script's update function is called. In update, calculate the player's new position by multiplying the heads forward by delta time, the time that has passed since the update function was last called, and 20, our chosen speed. The resulting vector will be added to the player's current position. If you attach player.cs to GBR main in our scene and press play, you'll see the camera will always move in the direction it's facing, even up or down, allowing the camera to exit the game arena. The original Asteroids is a two-dimensional game, so we're going to bound the player's movement to two dimensions instead of three by calculating a modified forward vector that the camera will move along instead of the head's actual forward. We'll set this new forward vector's y value to zero each time we calculate it, which will prevent the camera from moving upwards or downwards out of the game space we've built, even if the user's head is rotated some degree up or down. After creating it, normalize this new vector so that its length always equals one. Maintaining a constant length will ensure that the camera will move at a consistent velocity. If this direction vector's length was to change throughout gameplay, the speed in which the camera moves would change with it. While this would be a relatively smaller problem for regular console and computer games, in VR, any change in acceleration or velocity can easily cause simulator sickness and should be avoided at all costs. Upon pressing play in the editor window, you'll notice that we fixed the issue of moving up and down out of our desired game space but the camera is still allowed to move through and past our four boundary objects. We obviously don't want this. In the original version of the game, the player wraps around to the opposite edge of the screen when they hit a boundary. Even though our game's design is significantly different from the original, since it's played from the first person perspective instead of the third, we're still going to include this game mechanic because it's a defining component of Asteroid's gameplay and works just fine within the design constraints of VR. We'll create this effect by simply teleporting the camera when its X position or Z position is outside of the bounds set by the edges we created in part one. Each of our boundaries is placed 150 units away from the origin, so the minimum value should be negative 150 and the maximum should be 150 for both x and z. I personally think it looks nicer to subtract a bit of a buffer from these values, so that the asteroids don't spend as much time passing through the quads. With this in mind, I'm actually going to use negative 148 and 148 as the min and max while checking if the asteroid's position should be wrapped around. Add two if-else statements inside of asteroid's update function. The first one will check if the position's x value is in bounds by checking if x is less than or equal to negative 148, and if it is, resetting to 148, the maximum. The else if statement is nearly identical, except it's switched to checking if x is greater than or equal to 148 and reassigning to negative 148. To take care of teleporting for z, it's easiest to just copy and paste the code we just composed and change x to z. If you use the shortcut, don't forget to switch the x and z float values of the camera's new position, represented by the new vector 3's being assigned transform.position. With the addition of that last part, we've completed player movement for the game. You should now be able to playtest moving about the scene as it will be for the rest of the lesson set. Thanks so much for watching, and make sure to check out the next installation of this series covering how to create the asteroid obstacles.